Jumbo, how are you wherever you're watching this from? I hope this finds you well. My name is James Masharia and I'm born again today and I have the joy of salvation in my heart. Thank you for joining us again for this devotional and I hope that you will be blessed as you have continued being blessed in the previous devotions. I want to thank the church leadership for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. So today's topic is living life in light of eternity. Living life in light of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says that God has planted eternity in our hearts. I mean, that's why we have that desire to want to live forever. Maybe that's why whenever we hear someone has died, gone to be with the Lord, it pains us because we want to be with them forever. And this is something that God has put in every human being throughout the world. However, we live in such trying times. We now have the novel coronavirus to battle with, and not just here in Kenya, but the world over. It has made economies shake. It has made lives be changed. People have lost their jobs, their businesses have gone under. I mean, economies are on their knees. And the saddest part is people are also dying out of this disease. As I speak to you, the Worldometer reports that over 4 million people have been infected by this disease. And out of the 4 million, over 280,000 have succumbed to this disease. I mean, 280,000 is not just a statistic. That's people's lives. That's over 200,000 families grappling with dealing life, doing life without the, their loved ones there. It's such a hard reality that we live with. And for some of you, this has hit you hard because normal life as you used to know it probably is not normal anymore. And normal life as you used to know it for some of us will never be normal. Probably you've lost your job, probably you're not going to school right now, and how, do you, how tomorrow will be. Such trying times that we live in. However, the Bible, the Word of God, addresses us in such a situation that no matter what happens the world over, God is still on the throne. And in his word, he's given us word for the moment to be able to prepare ourselves for such and to be able to lay up our treasures where we need to lay up our treasures. Never has the prayers Moses made in Psalm 90 verse 12 shed a lot more light than now. He prayed and said, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Numbering our days such as time as this is, is something I'm sure some of you have thought of because he recorded in again Psalm 90 verse 5 to 6. We can turn there together with me. Psalm 90 verse 5 to 6. He said, and I, and I quote, You sweep them away with a, as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and it is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. James as well, the, he recorded in James chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. Come now, you say, Today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. I mean, guys, that is the reality of the matter. We are just but a mist here for a moment and tomorrow we are not there. So apart from knowing that, that life is just but a mist, another thing that calamities teach us is that calamities have a way of bringing death close to us. The 200 and, over 280,000 people who've succumbed to the coronavirus, that's just a foreshadowing of what will happen to you and I. 
one day we will be no more. And what we need to do as those of us who believe in Christ is prepare ourselves. In Matthew 6, Jesus said these words, verse 19, Do not lay up your treasure, yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. So friend, where is your treasure as you're listening to me? Where have you laid up your treasures? C.S. Lewis is famous for saying these words during the World War II. The war creates no absolutely new situation. It simply aggravates the permanent human situation so that we can no longer ignore it. Human life has always been lived on the edge of a precipice. Human life has always been lived on the edge of a precipice. So what do we do such a moment? In Psalm chapter 90, the verse that we read earlier, in verse 17, Moses says these words, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. We need to pray and prepare ourselves so that whatever we do, the Lord establishes it, the work of our hands. Living in light of eternity means that I do not lay up treasures for now, but I lay treasures for eternity. When neither moth nor rust can break in and destroy, when neither thief can break in and steal. That is where we need to lay up our treasure. So only God can take this dying seed called life and make it bear fruit that lasts for eternity. So the wisest person is therefore is not the one who stocks up masks and sanitizers. Rather, the wisest person is the one who, like city stud, prays from the depth of his heart, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. So friends, I want to leave us with this word in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So ask yourself, are you serving the Lord Jesus Christ? What are the work, works of your hands? Do you labor for the Lord? Do you work as if you're working for the Lord? How you study in school, how you work wherever you work, how you bring up your children. Do you bring them up in such a way as if you're working for the Lord? What kind of work do you do for the Lord? Are you laboring in prayer for those people who are infected? Are you laboring in prayer for those people who are, being, who are succumbing? Are you laboring in prayer for those who are succumbing out of this disease and do not know your Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus said that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that is the reality. So we who know Christ, we should make it our ambition to make Jesus Christ known and live in such a way that our minds are set on the heavenly reality. Our home is in heaven, not on this world. That is where we are headed. Life is just but a mist. So may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. Let us pray. God, thank you for teaching us these things. Help us to put our houses in order. Help us to prepare and lay up our treasures in heaven. Where we've laid up our treasures here on earth, Lord, may you expose our foolishness in that. May we learn to live life in light of eternity, knowing that you're coming back again for your church. May we be ready and may we always labor for your work while you tarry while we're here on earth. May we seek to make your name known throughout the ends of the earth, all for your praise and glory. For the people who are infected and affected with this disease, Lord, may you continue comforting them and teaching them these realities. For those who are mourning, Lord, I pray that you're going to comfort them. For those who've lost their jobs and their businesses have gone under, Lord, be their shelter and be 
their ever-present help in time of need. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. May the Lord bless you wherever you are.